Hello. So, hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to do research, how to find interesting papers, how to come up with new ideas, and what are some of my favorite sites, blogs, and other tools I use to catch up with the latest developments in theoretical physics. So the best place, of course, for finding papers, which every researcher should be familiar with, is a website known as archive.org. Now, Archive is a completely free service, uh, which is run by Cornell University, and researchers post their latest uh, work here uh, in the form of what is called a preprint, which is a, a research paper which has not been peer reviewed yet. And that is what it says here. So, for instance, uh, if you are interested in, let's say, uh, high energy theory, uh, you could open high energy theory, right? And you can see there are going to be thousands and thousands of papers on here. And uh, let's say we don't want to look at all of them, right? We want to see what's going on uh, in uh, recent months. So there are a few different ways we can do that. There is a browse option, there is a catch up option, and there's a search option. Of course, if you know what you're looking for, you can directly go to the search box over here and type in whatever you, you want to search for. So for instance, let's say you want to search for loop quantum gravity. Well, let's see. There we go. Now, so this shows you uh, 3,012 results. And this is the result of searching in all the fields. What are the different fields? There is a title field, author, abstract, comments, and so on and so forth. Now let's say you want to narrow it down to, to title, right? So you select title, you say search, and you can see that it's showing you about 700 results, right? Now, you can see here that all of these results uh, have the title, uh, the archive identifier, uh, which looks like this. So now, what, what is this archive identifier? So every archive paper has a unique number assigned to it. So for instance, this paper by Christina Geisel, Hongguang Lu, Paramprit Singh, and Stefan Wiegel has the identifier 2308.10953. What does that mean? Well, the first part of this, which is the 2308 part, that refers to the year. The first two digits refer to the year, which is 2023. And the second two digits, the third and fourth digits, refer to the month in which this preprint was posted. So in this case, this paper here was posted in August 2023. That's what the first four digits tell you. The remaining digits after the dot separator uh, simply label uh, the serial number of the paper. And you can see that every month, thousands and thousands of papers are posted to the archive. So at present, they have a five digit serial number, which means that archive can uh, label uh, 99,999 papers each month. Of course, when the number of submissions becomes more than 100,000, they will have to change this identifier uh, and increase uh, this part by one more digit. Now let's look at some other things. So this paper, each paper is posted in a particular category, which tells us what subject that pa paper is on. So here, this paper in particular, we can see is posted to the category which is listed as GR-QC. What that refers to is the fact that this paper is a paper in the category of general relativity and quantum cosmology. Now, papers can also be uh, co-listed. 
which means you can list them in more than one category. So in this case, the paper is also listed in the category astro-ph.co. What does that mean? Astro.ph-ph refers to the fact that it is related to astrophysics and .co refers to cosmology. Now, if you want to see a complete list of all of these uh, classes, you can go on the archive page and you can browse down and browse through it. And you can see that archive has papers on practically every field of science. Uh, well, not the life sciences, even though uh, it does uh, have papers on quantitative biology, as you can see here, and biophysics and other related topics. But if you are interested in doing research in the life sciences, then there is another uh, tool, which is called the bioarchive. So this is the preprint server for biology. So I will leave that uh, description of this server to whoever is the expert in biological uh, research. Coming back to uh, GRQC, now let's look at the second paper. Here, this is listed in HEPTH. HEPTH means HEP stands for high energy physics and TH stands for theory. So why do we need these different categories? Because, well, some papers are purely theoretical papers. Uh, other papers are talk about experiment. So for instance, you can see here that high energy physics, there are categories uh, experiment, uh, then lattice, uh, where you study lattice modules of high energy physics and phenomenology, and then theory. And each one of these is obviously labeled as HEP X, HEP LAT, HEP PH, HEP TH, HEP TH, and so on. So let's say uh, we want, we look at this paper and we are like, wow. That's a great title, six dimensional one loop divergences in quantum gravity from the n is equal to four spinning particle. Now, of course, if you're a beginning researcher, most of these words will have very little meaning for you. And that's completely fine, right? Because the whole goal of this video is to uh, show you how to do research, right? So how can you use the archive to learn about a subject, right? Well, let's say that you want to learn about loop quantum gravity. So we add some more words to this search field, right? So we have written loop quantum gravity and we say, let's say review, right? Okay, so that's 260 results, right? And now one more thing is important to note uh, there are a couple of other settings which are useful show abstracts hide abstracts you know if you want to find uh, just according to title uh, you can use hide abstracts and then press search and then you can see that the abstracts are hidden so you can browse through uh, the the papers at a somewhat faster rate right and now let's see let's look at this quantum cosmology, but of course, without the abstract, it's hard to figure out what exactly uh, a given paper is about, right? So let's go back to this. Then there, there are a bunch of other options on this page, which you can explore at your own leisure, number of results per page, sort results by date, uh, announcement date, submission date, relevance, and so on and so forth. So let's look at this paper on quantum cosmology. It's an invited contribution to the Encyclopedia of Mathematical Physics, providing an overview over some main ideas and results in quantum cosmology, right? Now, whenever you search for a paper, uh, which is a review or an introductory article, you will get uh, review, review papers uh, at various levels of technicality. There will be some papers which will assume that you are a uh, undergraduate student, others will assume that you're a graduate student, and still others will assume that you are a 
seasoned researcher uh, who is just looking to quickly learn about a new field. So of course it takes some time to figure out uh, which paper is suitable for you. That is of course the origin of the word research, which means to search over and over again until you find what you're looking for. So of course, loop quantum gravity isn't exactly an API. So the word tutorial won't tell us anything. And uh, let's show abstracts. And now it often happens that when you are searching, you see something which is not related to what you were searching for. For instance, I'm looking for an introduction to loop quantum gravity, right? So the first paper is on quantum cosmology, and that's great. Uh, well, the reason it's great is because this author, Stefan Guilin, happens to be a researcher uh, in loop quantum, working in loop quantum gravity. So I know that this will uh, talk about loop quantum gravity, and it says so in the abstract also. But now if you look at the second paper in this list, it's about scattering amplitudes in quantum field theory. And even though it has all three of those words, loop, quantum, and gravity, this paper is not about the field known as loop quantum gravity. It's about the, the loop here refers to uh, Feynman diagram expansions uh, at multiple loops. And quantum gravity just refers to the gen overall field of quantum gravity. Now, it might so happen that you might find this topic to be interesting for whatever reason. So you go to this paper, right? And then you click to click on PDF. And it shows you the PDF in your browser. And there we go, you can start reading it, okay? And uh, the browser will generally have these sections which will show you uh, the, the page images and then uh, another uh, tab which will show you the contents. Uh, so you can see that it, it, it's talking about scattering amplitudes and the introduction and blah, 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 lots of basics are required to understand this. But of course, uh, depending on your uh, uh, on your understanding of the of the topics, depending on how much how much you have studied and read so far, you may or may not be able to understand what this paper is about, right? So, for instance, this but a good review paper will, in general, uh, provide some guidance, some pointers uh, to readers, which tell uh, tell them what level this paper is or this review is aimed at. So for instance, uh, this paper says our aim is to provide a useful starting point to enable readers. Okay, that's great, uh, but uh, what kind of readers, right? Uh, so that's 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 not quite clear, right? So let's uh, keep looking, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Introduction. So now the next thing you do is you go through the table of contents. So let's look at this introduction and foundations, and then what is the first section? It starts talking about something called the Poincaré group and its representations. Now, if you have no idea what's going on here, that means you need to close this paper and go back to studying group theory. But if you have already studied a little bit of group theory, then you maybe can start reading from this section. So let's look at this. This is the Poincaré group and its uh, representations, right? So it introduces the notion of a, a coordinate transformation, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. Now, when you're reading a paper like this, how should you read it? Can you just sit down and and, and read through it, blah, 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 quantum field theory, this, this, this. Is that going to help you? Uh, not really. Uh, it will not really make any uh, impact uh, on your understanding unless you sit down uh, with pen and paper or a tablet and you take notes, right? So for instance, 
uh, you you know uh, write down what these equations are in your own notebook and <clears throat> uh, what will happen is that in any such paper uh, generally, there will be many steps which are not explicitly worked out. So, for instance, uh, this paper says that demanding invariance of the relativistic length implies the following condition, right? So, this is simply saying that if you transform to a new frame using a Lorentz transformation, the metric uh, should not change. And infinitesimally, we can write uh, the Lorentz transformation as the identity plus a matrix omega, which is a small Lorentz transformation or a small boost. And then the authors say, and find from equation 1.2, right? So the authors are not showing you exactly what's going on. They're saying find, okay? So it's your job to sit down, take this expression, substitute in this expression in 1.2 in these two places, with using the right indices, expand everything, keep only the terms to lowest order in omega. And when you do all that, you should find that uh, this relation holds true. And uh, in order for this identity to be correct, you will find that omega has to be an anti-symmetric tensor. So, Without taking notes and without working through these through these missing steps, you will not understand what is going on. Okay, so this is very very important. Now, other than our so this is archive, and of course now you might be asking yourself the question: What if I have a really great idea? Uh, should I just write up a paper and post it on the archive? Well, it doesn't quite work like that because if it did, archive would be basically a garbage heap uh, where every uh, self-proclaimed genius in the world would be dumping their crazy ideas. So in order to prevent uh, such kind of, of, of spamming and to retain the scholarly value of archive as a repository of the world's of much of the world's uh, research, uh, they have created a process uh, for submission on which about which you can read more on their main page, right? So if you scroll down on the main page, you see general information, how to submit to archive. Well, let's take a look. Can anybody submit to archive? No. Instructions for submission. So, uh, what does one need to be able to, uh, to, to submit, okay? So in order to submit, what uh, a new submitter needs is um, what is known as a recommendation by someone who has previously submitted to archive, okay? Why is this uh, necessary and useful? Well, it's again so that they can have some minimum level of uh, control over the quality of work that gets submitted to archive. But archive also, uh, even despite that, uh, that step, there is a lot of work that does get submitted to archive, which doesn't quite pass the standards of scholarly research. So what does archive do? Well, uh, archive, you have to agree to this su submission agreement. And one of the terms is that archive reserves the right to reclassify or reject any submission. Uh, so I myself have uh, encountered uh, this clause several times. Quite often it's due to a misunderstanding of the moderators of the uh, subject. And so there are various ways around that. But of course, if you have done good, solid scientific work, uh, there should be no reason for archive to reject your paper. If archive does reject your paper, what should you do? Well, you submit a paper to a respectable journal. 
so in the next section of this uh, video, I'll talk about what exactly are respectable journals, and what's the difference between a respectable journal and a not so respectable one. Because trust me, the internet and the world is jam-packed of these so-called journals, which you want to never, ever, ever go near, either as a submitter or as a reader. All right, so this is it for archive, and I'll stop here for now.